There are multiple tools and techniques you'll use right in the timeline to revise and refine your edit, but before we start making any changes, let's just watch what we have so far. There is a row of numbers across the top of the timeline in an area that functions as sort of a time ruler. The numbers, of course, show where you are in the project using a standard timecode format. The timeline's playhead can be placed anywhere in the project by simply clicking inside this time ruler. To watch your entire project from the beginning, just drag the playhead all the way to the start, then press the space bar to start playing it in the viewer. The keyboard shortcuts J, K, and L, as well as the left and right arrow keys, will also control the playhead in the timeline. You can use the skimmer to get around your project, or you can disable it. Remember, just press the S key on the keyboard to toggle the skimmer on and off. Use the playhead and the skimmer to play any section of your project at any time. Again, watching the work you've done so far is an important part of the editing process. There's one more detail that's good to be aware of before we start revising, and that is to make sure snapping is turned on. Snapping allows the playhead and the skimmer to stick to the edges of clips as you drag. This is important for many of the functions we'll use in the timeline, so it's best to make sure it's on until you find a need to turn it off. The snapping button is at the upper right of the timeline. When it's blue, it's on. Rearranging clips in the primary storyline is as easy as drag and drop. Just try it. If you want a clip at the beginning to be placed at the end or in the middle or anywhere along the storyline, just drag to place it there. The clips around it will shuffle to make room, leaving no empty spaces. Make sure you keep clips inside the primary storyline. If you do accidentally move clips outside the storyline, just drag them back in. Every project timeline should start with a little bit of empty space, what we call a gap. There are also times you may want a gap between two clips, perhaps when your project goes from one segment to another. In either case, start by positioning the playhead precisely where you want the gap to be inserted. This is an example of a function that requires that snapping is active. Once you have the playhead where you want it, use the keyboard shortcut Option W to insert the gap. The timeline element that appears in the storyline behaves like any other clip. Change the length by clicking and dragging the left and right edges of the gap. The box that pops up as you drag shows the new duration or length of the gap and how much time you're adding or subtracting. It's very common to be watching a section of project and realize that you need to adjust the in or out point of a clip. Changing in and out points of video clips is very similar to adjusting the length of a gap. Just click and drag either point to make the change, being careful to select the clip you intended and not the one next to it. Consider where you want the new point to be placed. As you drag, watch the viewer. Drag left and right to find the point where you want the cut to happen, then let go. This is often used to shorten a clip, but you can lengthen a clip too as long as there is content available outside the point you're adjusting. When you come across a clip you need to remove from your project, just click it to select it, and then press the backspace key. On a Mac, of course, the backspace key is labeled delete. Pressing that key will, in fact, delete the clip, and the clips around it will shuffle to close the empty space. 
there's another key on a full-size Mac keyboard, also labeled delete, that performs a different function. Use that key if you want the deleted clip to instead be turned into a gap. This isn't commonly used though. Most of the time, to delete a clip, use the backspace key and remove it completely. The simplest way to select multiple clips is to click and drag a box in the timeline. Be sure to start your box in an empty space. Everything the box touches is highlighted in yellow and becomes part of that selection. Use the blade tool to split a clip into two pieces. Go to the tool palette to switch from the standard select tool to the blade tool or just press the keyboard shortcut B. Your mouse cursor now shows the blade tool so when you click on a clip it will be cut at precisely that point. So how can you be precise? One way is to play the clip pause the timeline, and use the right and left arrow keys to position the playhead to precisely where you want to cut. This is the first time we've switched tools in the tool palette, so let's take a moment to make sure we've gone back to the select tool.